Hello friends, welcome to the channel. Welcome to Micro Rigs RC. Today we're going to talk about this new rig that everybody's talking about. is the new Axial SCX24 shape in the shape of the Jeep Gladiator. So it's really good looking. One of the big news from this rig is that it has a longer wheelbase than the previous versions. So it's quite longer. And it introduces some of the new features that we will be looking. But first, let me tell you that this is not the new Axial SCX24. This is a regular SCX24 in which I bought just the clear body to paint it. And then I bought the extended chassis with the links and drive shafts just to make for the long wheelbase. So this is basically a transformation of the uh, regular Jeep Wrangler into a long wheelbase Gladiator with the upgraded parts. And uh, of course, after that, as I always did, I've been adding some brass, uh, the new servo, new suspensions, clearance links in the front and in the rear. I've been making my own rear roll cage and uh, well, lots of stuff. So, so let's see how it performs. Taking a closer look at this rig is, well first, uh, I got rid of the velcro mounts and straps that came with the body. Uh, I'm really happy that it, it comes with the body, but uh, honestly, I would prefer if Axial could put the Windows mask in the package with the clear body instead of the velcro, because it has been really difficult to paint it without the Windows mask, but well. Uh, not to mention only that uh, I went with the brushless system for this one, so of course I went to the very well-known FuryTech Komodo brushless motor, in this case with the Tegu board, which is placed down here, and I have placed the, met the magnet mounts for the body front and rear. For that, I've been trimming the front tray for the electronics, just trying to make some room for the motor. I save it to the very, very last piece of space, not to rub here in the with the motor. And also, I took some time to drill new holes in the rails to put the battery tray a bit more relocated more forward and lower so now as you can see in these pictures now the battery sits more front and low benefiting the weight balance and the center of gravity other modifications that you would have known are the placement of the suspension i've been working a lot on the suspension of this rig basically because uh, i didn't like how it performed and I wanted to do something let's say, better. So I took this Katana or whatever you want to say, one of those FMS or different models or Patriot, etc. 118 scale shocks that I modified to put oil inside with a silicone uh, 
O seal or ring seal inside following uh, instructions of the idea of Donald Neff, which is uh, one of the gurus I used to follow on YouTube. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't manage to get it sealed because no matter if I was using 2.5 millimeter O-rings or 2.0 millimeters O-rings in the in place, it was always uh, leaking some 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 oil. Even using 200 CST oil, 300, 400 doesn't matter so in the end i just went to the instead of filling it with oil i just put a couple of drops of heavy oil like 400 cst viscosity oil which is heavy enough it's not leaking so much but it's still actuating like uh like an oil shock and it's dampening way better as you can see also in in these videos also for what i did to mount this is because one of the issues with these socks is that even if they are working really really good they don't have a lot of trouble so to gain some trouble one of the old tricks that we all know is to place the shock tower instead of right here very straight to one place here so of course you are gaining a lot of trouble on the wheels with the suspension here so after doing that i have to trim and to work on the spring grade because i didn't like it was going not very well so well after some adjustments i made these custom drills drill holes in the chassis rails i put this styrene row here to tie the suspension up here and at the moment i feel it's perfectly fine it has a lot of drop when i want it has a lot of compression when it's needed and it works very well with the custom clearance links I did with some rods and using or recycling some of the old links from another SCX24. I still need, of course, to improve that. This was my first version. It was kind of an experiment. In the front ones, as the wheelbase is the same one, sorry, the links are the same length as in the normal SCX24, I'm using the same injor as that I already had for other other rigs nothing new at the front i have this emax digital servo again with the metal links the brass diff cover the brass knuckles at the front i've not been using the same shocks that in the rear as i showed you because i've been making a lot of experiments uh, with this car in the beginning with different types of suspension as you can see in these images so finally i used the original axial shocks bolted back here instead of in its original place i had to use harder springs that i had over here and cut them a little bit to be a bit shorter but also a bit stiffer as well and with that i had the compression i had the travel that i wanted it still has some extension as I wanted, but not too much as it had in the past. And also it has some droop and some trouble down here as you want to have it without getting to rub too much in the body, in the fender flares. So I think that this solution, of course, with the modification of adding some green slime inside to make them damp, uh, so now they dump really really well as you can see in those videos i think it's how it performs the best also i have this custom fender that i like that much in this case it's with the golden whatever trim i didn't notice that it was golden i prefer the normal <laughs> metal ones but uh, yes and i had to make with the styrene my very own rods here to position it because now it's not interfering and not touching with the servo when it goes up and down so i had to trim it a bit in the support i had to trim and make my custom support for the fender right here but now it works really really well very similar happens at the rear i made my very own super simple single bar rear fender also with styron in uh, normal fender links here so nothing new nothing 
very very special i wanted to keep it simple i made also custom this rock sliders down here nothing sophisticated nothing really good looking but i needed something more or less fast and this is what i did and it's working fine as you can see what else one of the things that i have been struggling with is taking advantage of the fury tech brushless system that as you know is capable of working on 2s lipo and also on 3s i wanted to gain some top speed because uh, I was feeling that even if the low speed control is just amazing, equals to nothing, the top speed is really slow. So, so I was thinking that probably if we can use the 3S and the Discapable, we can make it go faster and we can go faster between different rocks and different obstacles, especially when we are going for trails because one of the weakest points of this setup is that it's really slow, it's way slower than the other ones that we have over here. So if normally we have in the Axial SES24 this 2S 350 milliamp batteries, I used to use this 2S 450 ones that are really cheap, really convenient. I've been using them for a long time and they fit exactly on the same footprint, so you can use the same tray. So I found also the same version for this, but in 3S. So it's basically using the same footprint as you can see, but they are just a bit thicker. So considering that the weight is very, very similar and they are using the same footprint, I can easily accommodate this 3S battery in the original battery tray of the SCX24. What happened is that I never suspect that with that, even when I was crawling really, really slow, I was getting a lot of torque twist. Basically, for those of you know what is the torque twist or TT, is that when you start triggering, when you start accelerating, the torque of the motor used to twist your axle. This is a natural tendency because all the rotation of the drive shafts and inside all the gears, it's rotating in one direction. So you will feel that always the car is twisting on the same direction when it goes forward and in the opposite when it goes backwards because it's in the same direction of the rotation of the drive shafts in a longitudinal uh, direction of the, of the rig. So, I was investigating and feeling why on earth, even if I was really, really slow, even without moving, just started to trigger, even when the rig was not yet starting to move, the car was totally lean on one side, totally twisted. So that combined with the long travel suspension that I was having at the beginning was giving a really awful result of a really strange stance almost about to roll the car and I didn't want to eliminate that so finally I found that it was the 3S lipo battery the issue with the torque twist so this has the FOC so basically it's a feature of some of the ESCs that I saw previously on the hobby wing AX that I have in my TRX4 that kind of makes it it can have the ability to provide all the torque ne needed, even if you are going really slow, just to overcome any obstacle. So, for example, if you keep a determined amount of trigger, of throttle in the trigger, and it starts to approach an obstacle, of course, a normal engine will start to kind of stall or slow down. But with the sensors of this motors the ESC with the FOC feature adds more torque to the formula so it kind of always climb and always pass all the obstacles at the same speed if you keep on the same amount of throttle so it's kind of adding more and more torque when you need it so as I was having some weights on the wheels weights on the transmission weights on the body I was having some weights on the chassis too here as I said, I have weights as well on the body here. So it was kind of a heavy rig and with the motor adding so much torque to move it, of course it was twisting. So 
I still need to test if I can, uh, with the Bluetooth app, remove all the FOC effect and see if now the Torque Twist is gone running on 3S. At the moment, what I did is just plug in the 2S LiPos instead of the 3S ones. And now the Torque Twist is almost gone. It, it goes, of course, really, really well. You can see in these performance videos that it goes really well. It has more torque that is needed and, and sufficient for making some moves. I would like to have more wheel speed for some inclines and for, as you can see here in Ireland, when we can uh, drive these rigs, uh, place used to be muddy, kind of humid. You can see most of these rocks are full of moss. So it's very slippery conditions. I'm using very good tires, as you can see, one of my favorite, the Goodyear Wrangler from RC4 wheel drive. But okay, some will say that it's not a totally dedicated uh, tire for mud, but it's not only running on mud, it's very different type of surfaces. So even if with the FTX and with the other Axial SCS24 that has way more top speed and, and wheel speed, I can pass more incline speeds at uh, slippery uphills very easily just with a lot of wheel speed. I will have some troubles with it. This has a lot of torque. Of course, I can just run up here, up a wall if I want, but it will not make it if it's a slippery. So that's my current struggle. Of course, I will try to change the pinion and make uh, a bit different. I am not afraid of losing some slow speed control because the slow, the, the smoothness, low speed end of this setup is just amazing. Another thing that I think it's really interesting about this rig is that the long wheelbase, it's making it capable of making really awesome stuff. I really like that it's more settled on some of the obstacles. It's running really, really smooth. It's making the, some of the transition. Of course, it has a lot of flex and it's making a lot of the transitions very smoothly. And it has more controls, of course, changing from one obstacle to the, to the next. But what I found even more interesting is that even if Axial was getting a bit out of the 124 scale rigs with the, with the Wrangler, with the Jeep Wrangler, because as you can see, it's a bit bigger than it's supposed. Some people used to say that it's more kind of a 122nd or 120th scale. It's funny that this is now with the longer wheelbase. You can see that now with this 118th scale Toyota Land Cruiser body from, uh, this is the same as in the Rock Hobby Katana, but in Lexan, so it's the CR18, etc., etc. You can see it has exactly the same wheelbase and you can use this body in this, in this rig. So, even to a point, as I can show you, that you can totally use this body with this rig. And probably this is what I'll be doing with the magnet mounts uh, sooner or later. So adding this body to this rig because, of course, this chassis and this transmission and all the options parts and all the performance parts that you can add to the axial are way beyond the performance and the things that you can mount on the Rock Hobby or in the... Well, let's say Hobby Plus, CR18, FTX, Outback, Mini X, blah, 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 whatever. All, all of them are more, more or less the same. So probably one of the things that I will be doing in the future is if I have another Gladiator or another long wheelbase axial is to use it with my beloved Toyota Land Cruiser body that I have from Lexan. So yes, very interesting one as well. And I will be working on that soon. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed that. I think that this new long version of the SCX24 in the shape of the Gladiator totally lives up to the hype. I think it's really awesome. Probably the best SCX24 up to date. Uh, and if you also have one, just leave me your comments. Thanks for watching.